So since I haven't done a snake collection video in over a year now, I've started to keep a lot more different species. I figure I'd go ahead and show y'all what I'm keeping nowadays and also update y'all for the ones that have been following me since the start. This is Goofy, my snoring gopher snake. He really hasn't tamed down very much in the year that I've had him, but he's always fun to have out, not knowing how he's going to react. He's very vocal. I've never had a problem with him beating at all. He's definitely gained some size to him over the past year. He's a really good eater. I'm trying to keep him away from my face because uh, he doesn't mind striking at me when he needs to. That is goofy. Like I said, he's a very vocal snake. Loves to rattle his tail and He's probably a little bit older than a year now, probably about a year and a half, give or take. That's Goofy, my Sonoran gopher snake. This is Eric's, my Bino Nelson milk snake. This was the first snake that I got. He sort of goes through some feeding changes occasionally. He doesn't want any adult mice, and uh, he just wants to stick to hoppers here and there. Then sometimes all he eat is uh, adult mice, so it really depends. I know for a fact that if he doesn't take an adult mice, he'll go ahead and take a hopper down without a problem. And so I've had him the longest out of any of the snakes. He's never struck in the over a year and a half that I've had him. I love his colors. I wish these colors showing up in some of the other bigger pythons and whatnot. That'd be really awesome. The reds and yellows in him. Where you going, buddy? This is Kunta Kente, my African house snake. He was the only wild caught snake that I have. He has been a problem feeder since I had him, mostly feeding on frozen thawed house geckos or Mediterranean geckos. I can usually get him to take a pinky a couple times. Once he's had a couple geckos in him, he'll be open to trying other things. This was actually the first snake I ever got bit by. He's helped me a lot as far as getting bit by snakes and getting over my fear of it overall in general. I'm not sure how much bigger he'll get. From what I'm told, this is about the size of an adult male house snake. This iridescence is really awesome. He's about to go in shed so you can't see it as much. It's cool having some of the smaller colubrids because I also have some of the bigger constrictors as well. And uh, having variety in the collection itself is enjoyable to me. There's some days that I want to chill with the smaller snakes and some days I want the bigger snakes out. It really just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. That is Kunta Kente. This is another one of the smaller colubrids that I keep. It's a western hognose, just a normal type, no morph to it or anything. He's been a good eater. His name is Ruger, only because I traded a Ruger rifle for him. Figure why not? I've wanted a hognose for a while and this dude has been enjoyable to keep for sure. Little baby hoggy. Not really a baby, he's about full grown as far as male hognoses go from also from what I've been told. He eats a good hopper a week doesn't ever refuse a meal. Sometimes it takes him a second to find it. He somewhat just blindly strikes at his food item. Really cool dude. For the most part, he's docile. Um, he is a bit vocal compared to some of the other snakes that I keep. I enjoy keeping them for sure. This is my Albano Japanese rat snake. He's usually pretty fun to hold him just because he doesn't really chill at all once he's out of his enclosure. I've had him for over a year as well. He's another one of those that can be picky as far as eating goes, but as you can see, he really doesn't chill out at all. I want to handle an active snake. This is definitely one that I get out. He does have a tendency to strike. I'm sort of waiting to see if that happens. As you can see, he really doesn't chill at all. And I definitely try to keep him away from my face. Pretty enjoyable species to keep. He's always out in the open. They're semi-aboreal, so if I have perches and whatnot in his enclosure, he's usually on him chilling. Let me go ahead and put this dude up since I don't feel like he really wants to be out too much anymore. No, don't go on my shirt. That is a, my Jap Albano at rat snake. This is Elvis, my Cali King snake. I've had him for about a year now, maybe a little longer. He was given to me by a friend of mine to take care of. He's always had a real awesome temperament, never struck. Right now, I believe he's probably about to go and shed. He's been hanging out in his water bowl a whole lot. Usually whenever he's about to go and shed, he stops eating for a couple weeks. But aside from that, he's always been a real good feeder. Real good temperament. This is one that I have no problem with my daughter holding. And that's him. And last but not least of my colubrids, this is a speckled king snake. Her name's Diamond. I'm pretty sure it's a female. I feel like this is a really underrated species as far as king snakes and colubrids go. She is wild caught. I know there's not a lot of them available in the hobby, but she is definitely one of my favorite species that I've kept or that I've wanted to keep for a really long time. She is wild caught and has adjusted to living the captive life pretty easily, taking frozen thawed mice. Right now she's on hoppers. 
I would like to get her up to adult mice, but I'm not gonna rush it. Her name's Diamond, by the way, only because she resembles a diamond python so much. This is almost like the poor man's diamond python if the Mexican black king snake is the poor man's indigo in a sense, I guess. See that speckling on her? She has so much of it. There's not really a definitive pattern at all, just all the speckles. I'm assuming she's about a yearling. Can't wait to see her grow up. So on to my boas and pythons. This is a Amazon tree bow that I picked up a few weeks ago. I ended up naming it Lucifer. Sticking with the whole devilish theme of snakes for the ATBs that I keep. This thing is really young, still feeding on pinkies, frozen thawed pinkies. Her pattern's not like a lot of ATBs. It almost has butterfly shapes on top and then the pattern itself actually fades away to the sides. This is a really fun species to keep. I feel like they get a bad rap. They can be a bit nippy. They're real focused on movement and whatnot. If you wave your hand in front of it, it's probably gonna strike. So one thing to keep in mind if you're handling is just let your hand be a tree, don't move it around a whole lot and let it perch. I like them. Like I said, it's a really cool species to keep. This one hasn't nipped me yet, but I do have one that does. See if I can get it out in a second. If any of y'all are considering getting an ATB, I would recommend it. There is Lucifer. You can see the pattern right there broken up. A lot of those reds and oranges are gonna fade, I believe, over time. Hasn't had a problem eating whatsoever, so that's always a plus. Kind of sucks when you get a snake that's picky that's a picky eater it's a little bit more work I guess it can be rewarding but it's also stressful not knowing if they're gonna eat or not that is Lucifer my Amazon tree boa this is Satan my other Amazon tree boa he's finally getting some size to him he is in shed right now so I'm not gonna have him out very long overall Amazon tree boas are a really good arboreal species if you're thinking about getting into arboreals they're a really good species to start with they're a bit more forgiving than let's say the green tree python or emerald tree boa they're really not bad they are handleable and like some people think they are the polymorphism in them is pretty awesome none of them really resemble the same you can breed this one and that one and have snakes that look completely different from both of them. Like I said, a funner species to keep. I've enjoyed keeping them, otherwise I wouldn't have got a second one here recently. But you can see the pattern on this one, how it's actually full from the top all the way to the bottom. I really enjoy them. Like I said with the other ATB, that they can be nippy, but they mostly only focus in on movement. I see him looking at my face, so I don't know if he's gonna strike in a second or not. He does have a pretty good strike range, so really nice snake. Overall, one of my favorite species to keep, and one I would recommend for somebody who's wanting to get into arboreal snakes. You see all this pattern. This is Cupid, my Hypo BCI. I've had him since February of last year, and he's grown a ton since then. He's uh, he's quite docile. He's usually one of the favorites that people like to interact with when I have him out around people. He's never been a problem feeder. In fact, sometimes he acts hungry whenever I know he's full. Male BCIs usually get to around the six foot mark. I wanna say he's right at a little over four right now. Year or so, probably maxed out on size. I've recently switched to feeding him small rats every 10 days or so. More so after he hit the yearling mark. It was probably back in February thinking about it. Time flies when you keep a bunch of awesome snakes and other animals for that fact. <laughs> Super interactive and like I said, one of the favorites that I have are people that come over and check out my animals. This is my yellow anaconda, Annabelle. I've had her since April of last of this year. She's about a yearling. Um, she's eating well on frozen thawed adult mice and uh, it's taken a lot of time to tame her down. She used to be really nippy and she still wants to be nippy sometimes but she hasn't nipped me in at least a couple months now but I really enjoy keeping this species. It's a rewarding snake to keep and the fact that it does take time to tame them down. It's not just one of those snakes that you get and expect them to be docile. You have to work on their temperament and I love her. She's a really good snake. I can't wait till she gets to about eight foot. That is Annabelle. So now on the pythons that I keep. This is Rowdy, my Erie and Jai carpet python. It's taken a lot of work over the past year or so. His temperament has changed completely. He used to be a snake that I really wouldn't handle that much. I don't know if he was intimidated of me or if I was intimidated of him, but we didn't have a lot of trust going on. Maybe his curiosity is what scared me off. He's a quicker moving snake than a lot of the snakes that I keep. He was purchased at about five years old. So he was pretty much full grown when I got him. He was just really underfed and malnutrition, I guess. 
Look, Rowdy, you're on camera. You don't care. Maybe he does. Who knows? I guess out of all the snakes, this was the one that I personally had to work with the most to tame him or to change his temperament. And because of that, we have a lot more trust than some of the other snakes. I've learned to read him a lot better because I know how he gets when he's defensive because that's how our relationship started off for the most part. He gets a large rat every three weeks or so. Basically just watch him whenever he processes them and digests them. I definitely don't want to overfeed him. He's full muscle as is, so a really wonderful snake. If you're interested in getting a carpet python, I'd say go for it. Just know that they do take work. If you're worried about getting bit, I might not get one if I were you, but if you're over the fact that they, you can be nipped occasionally, go for it. Because like I said, the bond me and this dude have are quite a rewarding bond. What, Rowdy? What? Getting all hissy? I put him back up. He was pretty much chilling and asleep before I got him out. He's always on the move. Beautiful snake. Next is my albino Burmese python Titus. This was one of the first bigger pythons that I got as far as species wise. I know the uh, harbor python's a little bit bigger than he is now, but Titus is gonna be a lot bigger than Rowdy one day. The temperament of a berm is amazing. I like to compare them to a huge ball python almost. They have their good days and bad days, but for the most part, they're sweethearts. Somewhat vocal, he gets a little hissy, bluff huffs, because he's yet to strike at me. He has no problem eating. He's never been a problem feeder whatsoever for me. I hear a lot of people about getting berms and not being able to really get him to eat that much or having a hard time getting him switched over. I don't feel like he's gonna have any issues at all once I switch him over to the rabbit. Probably being the next year so it's a really calm curious snake for the most part you can see size wise i mean the snake is this month uh actually july will make him a yearling so for a yearling he definitely has some size to him i really can't wait to see how he looks whenever he's full grown and he should max out at around 12 foot give or take i'm smile for the camera nope saying nope today so now we'll get into the reticulated pythons that I keep. This is Cartoon. She is a motley reticulated python. Not quite a yearling whatsoever. Um, actually, I'd say she's probably a few months old. She is a bit nippy at times, so I try to keep her away from my face, which I would do with most snakes that are nippy. One of my most active retics that I keep. Get away from my face. You see that beautiful pattern that Motley's have. I have plans on using her in the future for breeding projects. That's bedding stuck on her head, not head rub. None of my snakes really have problems eating, minus the house snake and the rat snake and the milk snake, which sounds like a lot, but out of 16 snakes, to have three of them that eat when they want, I guess, isn't too bad. This is the smallest retic that I have right now. She's not a dwarf or super dwarf, she's just the youngest. Cartoon, where are you going? Something about retics personalities I really enjoy. Maybe it's because their active behavior for being a bigger python. This is my golden child reticulated python, Skittles. She is a little younger than a yearling. Picked her up in April, the same day I picked up the yellow anaconda. She did nip me last week. I think it was mostly based on her being in shed and me not tapping her with the snake hook before I went in to get her out. I'm not gonna blame her at all because the only two things snake do or defends herself and try to survive as far as eating. So it wasn't necessarily a food response as much as it was just a defense response. She latched onto my thumb, let go. Once she realized she wasn't in any kind of threat, cleaned off my thumb and got her out. Right now, she's still in shit. I don't know if you can see it in her eyes or not, but this is Golden Child. She's gonna be the mama to some beautiful snakes one day. Golden Child is probably one of my favorite retic morphs just for the fact that it wipes out most of the pattern. And this is Cronus. He's the last of my retics. He is a lavender retic that I picked up last November. He will be a yearling in September. You can see that he definitely has some size to him. He's not a problem feeder whatsoever. This was the retic that inspired me to get the other ones. I really enjoyed his personality, the rate of growth, the food response. Pretty much everything about retics I found that I loved in this one guy. They're all really curious snakes. They can be defensive if not handled correctly. As far as learning how to tap train them or hook train them, it's something I would suggest anybody really learning how to do for any snake that gets bigger than six foot. And even then, if you got a snake that's 
somewhat defensive, go ahead and start tap training them or hook training them. You definitely don't want to get tagged by a snake, by a 14 foot snake one day. This is the only male retic that I have right now. He is going to be the daddy to some awesome babies. I plan on parenting to the motley and the golden child in a few years and seeing what comes out of that and maybe going back and breeding those and producing some really badass snakes. So yeah, as I said, he's just really curious. He likes to explore. This is one that's never struck at me. I'm not saying he's not capable of it, but he's just always had a real good temperament about him. Quite a few snakes since the last video. I hope you enjoyed it. Not really sure how many more snakes I'm gonna end up getting. I would like to keep a false water cobra and eastern indigo and probably get a hypo granite Burmese python one day to pair with the albino burn that I have right now. Aside from that, I mean, my snake collection has grown quite a bit since last video. And at this point in time, I'm kinda running out of room for them as far as when they do become their adult size. Anything I get from here on out, they're gonna be pretty selective about what I do have or what I do get. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll probably have another collection video coming up, whether it be the lizards or the tarantulas or just a room tour in general. Once again, this is Tattoo Highway and... Thank you.